The Chinese stock market lost $6 trillion since 2021. The government just recently had to inject about $300 billion to keep it afloat. If you look at this Asia Times article, you'll see Chinese banks lost $542 billion of deposits in April alone. And new deposits in their currency dropped 51% the first four months of 2024. In 2023, there were 13,500 Chinese millionaires and billionaires who took their wealth out of the country and fled to the West, with the exception of the U.S. UK because they had the bright idea to leave the European Union. China's youth unemployment in June of 2023 reached a record high of 22%. Then they shut down that metric for six months and showed, oh look, it magically went down to 15%. They have a $23 trillion local debt bubble that's been bursting for over a year. Mind you, China has an $18 trillion GDP, but their local debt is $5 trillion more. Yeah, the US has a $34 trillion federal debt, but look at that. We accumulated 2,100 more millionaires and billionaires from other countries last year. Huh. Another fun fact. You know how $2.45 trillion is China's total external debt? But China is holding on to more US dollars in their Forex reserves than their entire foreign debt at this number three trillion. It's probably why Chinese people can't take out more than 100,000 yuan every year from foreign ATMs. It also explains why Chinese immigration at the southern border is at a near all-time high. The foreign direct investment into China is crashing and why home prices in China are crashing even though the government is trying to prop up the market. All of a sudden, the Chinese government is handing firms 30 to 40 year old tax bills that were unpaid in order to get whatever funding that they can. Call me crazy, but it sounds like the authoritarian push to promote manufacturing and real estate growth without actually looking at the market isn't paying off. Take a look at this article by Will Daniel, where a former government official says that the number of empty homes is so large that the entire population of China can't fill them. The most extreme estimate is that there are enough vacant homes for three billion people. The Wall Street Journal has an article of a $100 billion Chinese ghost city, which is completely empty. That is how China has been showing constant GDP growth every single year. We did the same thing with manufacturing, where solar panel companies, cars, and petrochemical refineries are seeking government guidance on how to deal with excess production capacity. Pretty much meaning there's way too much supply for demand, which is why China is still struggling with deflation, which has been rampant for over a year. It's also why the U.S. economy has been growing faster than China's year on year. U.S. nominal GDP has grown at a compound rate of 6.75%, while China's has only grown at 6. Remember that nominal GDP measures the total value of goods without adjusting for inflation. America has inflation, and China has deflation, which puts us far ahead of them. And here's something that the BRICS lovers are just gonna hate hearing. The gap in GDP growth between the US and China is getting wider again, meaning China is not able to catch up to our economy. Economist George Magnus said the same thing about the widening of this gap from 5 trillion to 10 trillion. And he says, if this keeps going, China will never catch up to the US. There is now a rising chance that the great crossover will not happen at all. Even worse for China is that right now, their economy is about two thirds the size of ours, while it was 70% our size in 2022 and 76% over three quarters in 2021. Another great article by Ignacio de la Torre, why is the United States growing faster than China? In this article, he destroys the GDP measured in PPP argument. So people use the PPP argument saying that it's so much cheaper to make products in China that it doesn't matter that they make so little. Here's the argument. If country A produces 10 loaves of bread and has 10 inhabitants, and country B produces 7 loaves and has 40 inhabitants, pause to read the rest because I don't want to explain the whole thing. The PPP argument would work if China had a similar population to the United States, while in fact we are only, what, a quarter of their size. China's GDP per capita is about 12,700 and America's is 76,000. And there we have it. The U.S. economy kept chugging along and we added a Korea worth of GDP, according to this Bloomberg article. And since China is running out of every single avenue for domestic economic growth, they are seeking to forcefully expand their borders by harassing their neighbors. They have been trying to take land from the Philippines, Vietnam, Russia, and India, inadvertently growing their GDP because of the resources that can be exploited 
if this land grab is successful. See China's GDP before the Great Leap Forward, which took place in 1958, and then it just dropped like a dead weight in 1960. Similarly, what happened after the Cultural Revolution, that's what it looks like China is gearing up for as they become even more authoritarian. My name is the Geo Hussar, and the free market will always kick the crap out of authoritarianism. Share and repost this, and thank you so much for watching.